guys, Kim here with Art Classes for Kids. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And today I'm going to be doing a painting on a canvas with you. It's a still life painting and it's inspired by Henri Matisse, or in French they'd say Henri Matisse. And uh, it's a really easy painting. It's really been popular over the years with my younger students because they build up their confidence with a simple painting. It's one of those paintings that if you go to the museum, and I think it's in the Chicago Art Institute, when you, um, or the Chicago Museum of Art, when you go there, you know, it's that painting that people walk by and go, my kid can make that, you know, like it's so easy. But at the time, it was really different and it helped make Henry Matisse really famous. So let me tell you what you're gonna need to make this painting. You can either use a canvas panel, like a thin panel, which is canvas stretched around a board, or you can use one of these types of canvases where it's stretched around a wooden frame and staple. So choose which one you want to use. Uh, these are less expensive, so sometimes people buy a bunch of these in a pack. I'm going to use this one today because I like the size. And then you're going to need some acrylic paints. You can use any kind of acrylic paint you have and you might have the kind in the tubes. Those are great. I just don't use those that much with kids because they tend to waste a lot of paint in my classes if I let them squeeze it out themselves when it's in the tubes. So I go with these craft paints because we go through a lot of paint in our classes for kids. And I've got a little uh, assortment of colors right here. Um, you're, you'll need a medium brush and a small brush, and the medium brush is, I like to have a round brush, a paper plate for your paint, a pencil, a water jar, and paper towels, and I think that's all you're going to need. So gather up your supplies, and while you're gathering up your supplies, I want to thank you so much for tuning in if you've been tuning in to my videos, and it's been already over two months that I've been making these on a weekly basis and I started out making five videos a week because you guys really wanted me to and I wasn't used to doing that I used to only make two videos a month because I run a business and I'm very busy with my business but then once school closed and we were at home with the kids and I didn't have my classes anymore and I haven't had any art classes for two months and I've been doing this a long time so that's really unusual I had more time to make you guys classes. And these are the same things I do in my classes. But then I started getting busier because I had to plan for the summer. And I had to also cancel my summer art camp for the first time in 30 summers. So I came up with something as an alternative and I've been working really hard at it, which is why I've only had three and now two videos a week. And what I've been working on is art camp in a box. And I just launched it. So if you're wondering, what's Art Camp in a Box? Well, you can watch two of my unboxing videos because I have two different um, art boxes. One of them's for kids that are five through eight, and I call that the beginner box. And then I also have the box that's for nine years old and older. And each of those boxes, you can buy them separately as uh, for one student, or you can buy a sibling box where it's for two. And it doesn't have to be your sibling. It could be your you doing it with your mom. It could be you doing it with your best friend. But um, those are what we have, and you'll see all that if you watch the videos. And um, gosh, what else was I gonna tell you? So that's coming up, and we just launched that a few days ago. So if you buy it now, you get a little discount. The price of the box is $175. You get 10 projects to make, and um, you get all the supplies you need. And you also can watch it in a live virtual camp, which I will be having a Zoom class. The first one's June 15th through the 19th, where you'll tune in with me for three and a half hours each of the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and get to make really cool stuff. With me and my other assistants, you'll finally get to meet all my other instructors, or many of my other instructors. And um, it's gonna be so cool, so I hope you tune into that. Um, and gosh, what else can I tell you? Oh, so if you buy one by May 15th, then, which is only another week away, you can get a little discount, it's $160. But back to this. So hopefully you're gathering up all your paints and uh, if you have gathered your paints, I wanna thank you guys that have sent in photos because I love getting your photos, seeing how all your finished work turns out and some of you even send in photos of you making the work. Some of you even have the 
the TV screen in the picture where you can see me and sometimes I'm with Lily and we're teaching a project and you're making it and you send me a shot of that and that's super cool too. So if you ever want to send a photo again, or if you've never sent one before, you can just uh, shoot, shoot your photo over to Instagram, post it with Art Classes for Kids, or you can send it directly to my email, which is kim at artclassesforkids.com. And check out my website too, which is artclassesforkids.com, because that is where you can purchase the art camp in a box. So let's move on now. What we're going to do is we're going to paint this painting and I'm going to do it on a canvas. And so that you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to use a Sharpie, but for you, use your pencil to sketch out the composition. Because if you need to adjust, you can always, woo, you can always erase. Uh, and if you're ready, we're gonna get started. First, we're drawing the composition, then we're getting to the paint. So the first thing you're going to do is, woo, uh, go put your finger right in the middle of your whole canvas and hopefully it's a rectangle once you do that make a little line right in the middle so right here now from here you're gonna make a circle that doesn't touch the sides but it does touch the top so watch me I'm going to make a circle that comes all the way to the top but it doesn't touch the sides and that is going to be the beginning of our table. And this famous work of art is called, well, it's referred to as Apples on a Table, but it's really, the real title when he first made it was Apples on a Table in Front of a Green Wall. And so this is the green wall. This is actually what his real painting looks like. It really looks like this. This is a photocopy of the real painting. This is our little example of one, but I'm gonna give you options because you don't have to have the green, um, the green wall behind it. You can have whatever color wall you want. But actually, the real, real name is in French because Henry Matisse is from France. And so the real uh, title, I have it written in French right here, is Les Pommes sur la Table se font vert. So it is the pommes or the apples, uh, sur la table is on the table, and ce fond vert is in front of the green. So if you uh, want to learn more about Henry Matisse, you can always look him up. So I'll leave that here, and I'll leave that right there, and let's go on and draw some more. So next we're going to draw, there's actually a bowl on top of the table, or actually, no, no, it's just that the, the table has two different colors on it, like a brown and a yellow here but it's like the table has like a little like trip to it or something. Now the thing that made Matisse's work so popular is that it was different. It was different and he was doing it about 100 years ago. This painting's from 1916, so that would make it 104 years ago. And the one thing he did in his paintings was that they weren't cubist, but cubism was really big then because he was doing his art at the same time Picasso was doing his art is that the perspective is askewed. It's not realistic. So if the table was standing up, the, um, the table top would be sideways with the apples on top, but he's taking the, the, the table, so like this is the table, and he's turning it forward like that to you. So the apples are in front. So you, they're the main focus. And instead of like this, where you see the edge of the table and you only see part of the apples. So he's, he's changing the perspective to make the viewer get to see the exciting part of his painting, which is the apples, because people are excited by food, right? And so this perspective is incorrect, but it isn't as busy or as broken up as a cubist work of art would be, which was happening at the same time, but with different artists, and actually in the same town in Paris. So there's your little art history lesson of the day. Let's get back to drawing the composition. So now what you're gonna do is make another ring, but it's not gonna go all the way around. It's going to make a curve like this. And there's space in between the two curves on the bottom, but they come together right at the top. Hopefully you can see these lines. I'm doing them pretty thin, but we're gonna thicken them up with paint. Now we're going to make the 
the pole, the thing that holds up the tabletop to the base, okay? That, what you're going to do is you're gonna put two lines down until they're about halfway to the bottom. And then when they get to about halfway, you're gonna make, oh, a little line across and close it up. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it look like a rainbow is coming through here. So what I'm gonna do is go to the bottom and make a rainbow right here. So go ahead and do that. That one's right here. There's a little rainbow right here. After you get that, you're gonna mimic the right side of the rainbow by going over here like that and mimic that, like repeat that over on the left. So it's curving down like this, but then it's gonna curl kind of up. This reminds me of when you, a side view of like a slide at a playground or something where you go down and it curls forward. So now what we're going to do is go down a little more until we get right below the bottom of our canvas and curve and stop. Now we're gonna repeat that with this line. We're gonna go down and curve to the right and close it up. We're gonna do this to the left but the opposite direction. So now we're gonna go down and curve left. And we're doing it again. Down and curve to the left and close it up. And now we're going to add two more lines to make this brace that holds up the table stronger. So we're gonna add a little line to the right and a little line to the left. So we're looking pretty good with our table, but this goes a little lower. So go ahead and take this down and angle, angle it up like that. And that is our base. Pretty easy. There's only a couple more steps of the composition. Now, right where the edge of, of the table is, you're not gonna put a line to the side of it. You're actually gonna look like it goes behind. So what I'm gonna do is make a line down here and when I hit the table, I'm gonna keep going vertically down all the way to the bottom like that. And after I get that, I'm gonna put these little waves all the way going up here and there's probably about 15 of them. Let's just say 15. So we're gonna make a line, we're gonna start on this line and we're gonna curve like a rainbow and curve like a smile. Or you could say frown, smile, frown, smile, frown, smile. You get it? It goes down and it comes up. So frown, smile, oh I gotta get 15, I got five. Oh my gosh, I better get them a little closer together. Maybe I'll add one more up here. So you need about that many. And lastly, we're going to put the apples on the table, just like the title says. The apples on the table. So we're gonna start with two side, side touching the bottom. Now make sure they aren't that low. And you know what? If you would rather not have apples, you can put a different kind of fruit. If you have a favorite fruit and you're not into apples, if you want to make them all pears, go ahead, but you got to know how to draw a pear. Here, I'll put it on the back of this plate. If you want to do a pear, a pear is a smile, a little rainbow, and then connect. Kind of like that. You could have a banana. That's three curves with two little rectangles at the bottom. If you want to have a banana. If you want to have grapes, you just have a whole bunch of circles and then sometimes they're behind each other. So those are some simple fruits. The easiest one is the apple, which is very round. And, and not every apple is round like an orange, but he's drawing them as if they were as round as an orange. So I'm going to go ahead and show you those. So in between these two and behind it is going to be another, another apple. And then there's going to be one hiding behind this one, but a little higher. Now we're going to put one on the right. So now they're all touching each other. So now we have five. It almost looks like the Olympic rings upside down. And now we're going to put one in between here. And now we're going to put one a little higher up. And now we're going to get one up pretty high up there. So we have at least four layers high of apples. You can make them bigger if you want and make less. 
Now let's put a couple over here. And let's add a couple over here. Put one hiding in here. Okay, now look at how you see the little dent where the stem comes out of an apple. You only see it on some, over half of them. So pick, oh my gosh, we've got like, I have 13 apples. I don't know how many you have. You might have a dozen. You might have six. It just depends. But make at least half of them have that little dent in the top, which looks like a baby smile on top. You can have an apple that's turned sideways, and, and then it doesn't have the smile, it has a sideways curve. This one's gonna have a stem. Okay, I'm leaving a few without a stem, because maybe they're upside down, mixing it up. So, we have drawn the composition, and that, my friends, is easy. So, now let's set this down and let's get the paint. The first thing we're going to do is get black and we're going to do all of our lines. We're going to go over what we drew with black paint and with, out of your two brushes, with your smaller brush. So go ahead and just start painting and now you're going to get a thicker line. So if you want to get a smooth line, I just say you pull your paint across compared to going like that. Part of these lines are going to get slightly covered when we use the other color of paint. But that's okay because we're making them bolder than they really need to be. So go right ahead. Now, one thing you can do when you watch a video of mine is that you can pause the video at any time and then you just catch up with us if you want to take more time than how, you know, the pace I'm doing. And then when you're ready, you just push play and you're back on with this. See, I just keep pulling my paint. When it gets dry, I re-dip. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So be thinking right now as you're painting black, what color would you like for your background? Just be thinking about it. It could be green, it could be any color. And actually his painting is green, but he's got blue mixed into his green. If you look really close, it's got blue with dry green all over it. So, let's see. So far, I've got my table done. Now, I think I'll do my fruit last. And I'm going to do this line. I'm just kind of cruising through it. This is a popular painting. I think that this gets done at school a lot too. I love Henry Matisse because he uses really bright colors. And at the time when he was painting, he was one of the few artists that was doing really bold, bright colors. He would make everything look more colorful than it might have actually been in real life because he thought it's more important how the art makes the viewer feel and not them judging how realistic it actually looks. So now we're gonna outline all the apples the best we can. I hold my paintbrush straight up when I'm painting if I want a skinny line. Okay, I hope you're hanging in there. Painting the fruit day. Now you might ask, why still life? You know, people have been making still life for hundreds of years. And what they would do before is that they would do a lot of portraits and a lot of landscapes to uh, document things that are happening. They would do portraits and landscapes to document places. But then the camera was invented over a hundred years ago. And the camera could make things look way more real than a painter. Even though the great thing about painting was before the camera, the painter could create the way he wanted it to look. So it might not have really looked the way it actually was. But 
One thing is that the still life became a way that artists could build their techniques. They could practice drawing realism by keeping something set up and still and going back to it after they worked on it for a few hours and taking a break and stepping away from it and coming back to the same thing and it has moved compared to a human can't stand still for that long. And the landscape, the lighting changes. So this was a great way to build an artist's skills in the olden days. So I've got all of my black lines done. So I'm going to get out the paints I need to do the next part and I just rinsed out the black in my skinny brush. Well, I think what I'm going to do is, um, well before I do that, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take and I'm going to make the bottom part right here under the table legs, I'm going to make that black while I've got this black going. So go ahead and paint this all black. Oops, I covered up a little part of my table, but I can always paint over it. And that's the beauty of acrylics, is that paint can cover paint once it's dry, and you can get another color that, to cover another color. Okay, so I've done the bottom part, filled it in black. Now, I don't have to exactly copy a famous painting, but if you like doing that, a lot of people do it because it's good practice for building skills. But you can make it your own. If you want all the apples to be purple, and, you know, I'm going to do an unrealistic one because I already have one that's similar to Matisse's. So I want you to decide what you want to do. But I'm going to do all my fruits in purples and blues. And I'm going to do my background in red. And I'm going to do my table green. I'm just going to mix it all up. But I need to pick out the color of paint that I'm going to use. So I definitely need, well, I don't really need white. But I do want some yellow to lighten some things up. So now I'm going to set up my palette. So I'm going to put yellow, and you don't need that much paint. Okay, yellow, and I'm going to pick green. I'm going to take both shades of green. And then I'm going to take blue and purple because I was going to use blue and purple for my fruit. So now I'm just going to make a really cool colorful paint and some pink. And my background is going to be red and orange. I'm going to grab a little bit of white in case I want to lighten any color up. Okay, move those aside. Move this aside. So I've got my palette of paints. I've got my painting and all my composition, all my parts like outlined in black. And now I'm gonna go for it. I think I will do my background first with my big brush. I want to have my background to be orange and red. So before I do it, I'm gonna pick the lighter color and paint the background that color. So my lighter color of red and orange is orange. It's a little bit lighter. So I'm going to paint and I'm not going to worry if I get on top of those black lines that much or if my paint gets a little dirty because Matisse's colors were never pure and solid. They were had a little other color mixed into it somehow. So I'm going to start doing orange, bright orange on everything. Now, you might not pick the colors on my pick. If you're doing this color scheme, you want to pick a light, a turquoise type blue. Um, and then fill in your background, and then you can put green on top of that to mix it in. Okay, I've got one half of it. Now I'm going to do this side. Notice how I just pull my paintbrush. I'm slightly going over those black lines because I don't want it to be that thick later. Okay, I've got that much so far. And now I'm going to finish 
this area. And I only had that little squirt of orange paint, but it really goes a long way. So I'm trying not to cover all my lines. I'm gonna squirt just a little more orange. Okay, before I run out. So, although I'm gonna have a red background, I'm making everything have an orange undercolor. It'll make the red a little brighter. Or it'll appear brighter. The red's still the red. It's just how it optically is viewed. Just do the best you can do. Remember, there's no mistakes. It's okay if you go out of lines. Just wanna be able to find those lines later if you have to. Okay, on top I've got a little different color here. You see how he has a different color right in here? So I'll just create a different color in there. Or, you know what? Huh, wood. What color am I going to do this? I'm going to do that green. I think I'm gonna do this green in here. So choose a color that it's different than your background. And fill it in. Okay. Now, I wanted red, but I don't want to wait till this dries because I want it to kind of mix. So now I'm going to add some red, but I'm not covering all my orange. I'm just kind of mixing it in with orange, and I'm going to have some bright red spots. So I'm pushing it around, but I can still see some orange peeking through. And I'm doing the same over here. can do over here. Get to try a little more. Now I'm going through all these areas and adding a little red. A little bit more and I'm down to the bottom. a little bit like this. Clean that part up. Over here, if I want any brighter red, maybe I'll add a little extra red in here if I want it really bright in here. I'll have a big bright red spot over here. Okay, so I want it a little bit messy, but within my lines. So I've got the background. I've got this little area I've got under the table. Now I decided I wanted my, my table to be tones of green, different greens. So I'm gonna start with my lighter green, which is this one. And I'm gonna paint the whole thing this lighter green. And then I'll add some darker green. I just had some red in my brush still. So I'm gonna wipe it out. Now I go for the green. Remember, you can do any color you want. You can do this color scheme, you can do this one. You make it your own. The thing that made him famous was the way that he treated the composition and the perspective and also what colors he chose. I want you to choose the colors you want. Okay, so we've got that. I've got this green table. And then I'm going to add some darker green to mix it up. It's not too perfect. I'm gonna make it kind of streaky. So there's my green table. So nothing, he had a, the, a base, my, my green base. He had a red base, but nothing else on his table was red base. So I'm gonna make my table actually the colors he did. So yellow with like a tan, 
I'll start by painting the whole table yellow. You choose what color you want your table and then pick a lighter color to do underneath the, the main color. It's like an undercoating. So I've got that yellow and I'm also going to do the same thing on the tabletop. So Henry Matisse has done a lot of famous paintings. This is one, but he has many. If you want to learn more about Henry Matisse, please Google the guy. He's interesting and his art's beautiful. He did still lifes, he also did some landscapes, and he did a lot of portraits. Okay, we've got it to there. Now I see little spaces in between where it's the table. So I'll add a little yellow in that little spot, that little spot. Okay, now I want the, the table to have some shadows. Here it looks kind of greenish and there it looks kind of tan. So I'm gonna take my light green and I'm gonna add some green. Ooh, that's not even dark enough. Let's add some of this green. So we've got some green there. Then I need some tan. Well, how do you get tan? Tan is a form of brown. How do you get brown if you don't have brown? Well, you add a couple of opposite colors and you lighten them up. This is what I tell kids. It's easy to remember. Think Christmas colors or Mexican flag. Think green, red, white. Mix those together, but not evenly. Depends on the kind of red you want. I already had green in my brush, so I'm gonna to go to this little spot where I have green and red, because I had green in my brush, added the red, and I start getting a brown. If I want the brown lighter, I can either add a little yellow, or I can add some white to it. And white, that's what makes it those Christmas colors. So now it's kinda of tan. Let's try it out. Yep, there you go. So now we're gonna take this down across the bottom and take it all the way around that area. Now I have pretty much gotten a little sloppy here on my black line. So if I wanna get a little of that black back, just use a teeny bit of paint and just get your black line back. Just like that. You don't want it to be perfectly neat because this painting's more perfectly neat. See, that's the bonus of this painting. Okay, we are almost there. Now it's fruit. Okay, when I look at his painting, I see one green one and a little green shadow. And the rest are different colors. I think I'm gonna have that one green one and a little shadow and then I'm gonna do all of my apples blue and violet. So I'm using my smaller brush because I'm getting into a smaller area and I'm going to do the green, the green apple, which is right here. Now I have like a really transparent green, so I'm going to take my green and add a little white to it so it isn't so transparent because it was like a fluorescent color and they come out really transparent. So now I'm going to do this Then I'll add some dark green to it. And I've got that shadow over here. So I've just got a shadow like that. When this is dry, I'm gonna add some darker green to it. But in the meantime, the rest of them, some are yellow and some are red. The ones that are yellow, I'm going to do light blue, and the ones that are red, oh, let me mix this color in, I'm gonna do lavender. So whoops, a little dried piece of paint. Okay, I'm going to get this turquoise color, and I'm going to do a blue, I'm gonna mix blue and turquoise and get a lighter blue. Okay, so I'm going to do all of the yellow apples that I see over there. I'm going to do those, it's light blue. And I will do this one over here. I might not have drawn exactly like the famous painting, but that's okay. Because then all of our art would look alike. I'll make this one a blue one. 
I didn't draw mine like that. Okay, the rest I'm going to do lavender, but I don't want this, well, let's try the dark purple. It's pretty dark. Yeah, it's too dark. I'm gonna mix pink and purple and get a lavender. So now I have this color. That one will just be a darker one. So as soon as I get all of my lavender, I'm going to see if I want to add or subtract anything. Okay, I'm going to add a little extra color to some of these. So the blue ones, I'm gonna add a little bit of lavender to the side of a few of them. And then to the lavenders, I'll add a little bit of blue or just so they look a little different. I'll add a little white to make some of them lighter. I'm perfectly solid. Some dark lavender there. A little dark lavender there. And now I've got some darker spots. And what about my table? Okay, my tabletop isn't pure yellow. It's kind of dirty. So I'm going to wash out my brush, get a little yellow, add a little green to it, make it kind of dirty and kind of make this area a little not so clean. Wow, that'll help. Okay, so right in here, I'm making it kind of a yellowy green where I added a little bit of green and some yellow and got this new color. Whoops, too much. And it looks a little like this. What else would I change on it? There's a dark black spot on this side. So let's get this a little darker over here. Are there any other dark spots that he's left? This is kind of dark here. And there's some shadows up in here. Right in here. It's really dark in here and around here. And I think I'm done. So this is a whole new color scheme of this famous painting, Matisse's Apples on a Table, in front of a green wall, but I'm having it in front of a red wall. So it doesn't have to be realistic. I want you to make it your own, and I would love to see how yours turned out. Let me move this down here and yes. compare the two. So these are the two paintings. This one looks more like the original color scheme, and this one is my one that I made my own. So I love when kids make it their own, but they still are learning about famous artists, about famous compositions, about how to use materials, all that. That's what it's all about. So I hope you keep joining me to make, uh, you know, more cool art. And what else can I tell you? I want to see a photo of this. So if you can, snap a photo, uh, post it on Instagram, tag it with Art Classes for Kids, and keep, uh, Keep watching us, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notifications button because then you can find out every time we get a new video out. So thanks for joining me, send me your photos, and keep making cool art.